Yeah, you're welcome back to your global business report. Earlier, we listened to the central bank governor on the monetary policy meeting decisions today. Joining me now to discuss this a bit further is Tilewa Adebaja, who is the CEO of a CFG advisory, to discuss these uh, issues a little bit further. Thank you so much. It's happy to see you in the new year, 2022. So you're coming in on a very big day with the monetary policy rates all being uh, uh, all parameters on, on hold. But if we start from the externalities, looking at the U.S. Uh, rate hike impact on Nigeria, why do you think the FOMC will decide tomorrow? That's the U.S. Fed. And do you think it will have implications for us? Well, I think the direct implication for the increase in the uh, rates by the, Fed Res the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States uh, will impact more of our Eurobond funding. Uh, because most of the World Bank and the IMF funding we have is more development finance. Um, and they, they attract lower interest rates. But the Eurobonds, which have been very active in the Eurobond market, will now begin to attract um, higher interest rates. Um, and of course, the investors are going to be pleased with that because the yields on those bonds will be higher. Uh, but on the, ne on the negative side for the Treasury and the Federal Ministry of Finance, we're going to have to pay more in debt service. Um, so, and we're planning to fund, we have a six trillion Naira deficit this year, and we're funding half of that deficit on the Eurobond market. So clearly that funding exercise is going to be more expensive. And as you know, debt service is already taking about 95% of our revenues, and is the second line item on our budget behind defense spending. Uh, so this is going to go up more. Uh, and it's going to put more pressure on our, on our revenue streams. So Ooh. that's the direct impact that I see. The secondary impact is the fact that because interest rates are a lot higher offshore now, uh, you can begin to see disintermediation in the sense that emerging markets might not be as attractive uh, as before, and uh, the hike in U.S. rates and the risk uh, factor will probably, investors might favor going into more uh, uh, of the bonds in their own markets as opposed to emerging well, markets. Where does that leave Nigeria and other emerging and frontier markets in Africa, for example, in terms of what's the positive side, if any, of, of, this, of what is happening in the wider market of the U.S. and the euro? Well, what it just means is that we need to restructure our economies. Our economies still remain competitive in terms of the low labor costs. You can see what has happened in China. China has done a record 700 billion trade financing surplus. Their trade surplus is 700 billion, which is a record high for them. And um, they're managing that very well and they're adjusting because they continue to manage their foreign exchange and their interest rates to be able sh to ensure that their goods are competitive for exports. So in terms of the inflation consideration for the uh, monetary policy, there's a whole bit there to, to consider. You have inflation, you have the FX. But, but give us a few minutes, uh, Tilewa. Let's just uh, take a listen to the Central Bank Governor very quickly uh, for some of his words, what he just said, just within the hour. Let us sit there very quickly, then we'll, we'll come back to you. The NPC observed with concern the moderate rise in inflation in December 2021 noting that this was typical of increased aggregate demand associated with the end of the year festive activities. Members, however, expressed their continued com commitment to drive down domestic prices by putting in place relevant policy measures to curb the rise in inflationary pressures while also supporting the fragile recovery. In its determination as to whether to hold or losing or tightening its policy stance. MPC was mindful that whereas the US and some advanced economies have signaled their intention to commence policy normalization, which may result in capital flow reversals for the emerging market and developing economies, the major focus of these climbs were targeted mainly at reigning in the high level of inflation which had been unprecedented in the last four decades in those climes. For Nigeria, members were of the view that Nigeria is confronted by not only inflation, but also fragile output. As a result, MPC believes that its current stance of price and monetary stability, conducive for growth, remain desirable. The MPC is convinced that various measures, various measures being implemented were helping 
not in boosting output growth, but also in moderating inflation. MPC therefore enjoined management to continue to use its development finance tools to accelerate output growth, which would also help in boosting manufacturing output that would ultimately help in moderating prices. It also requested management to continue its use of administrative measures, including discretionary tools at its disposal through the CRL to control money supply in the economy. In its final consideration, the committee was clear that a loosening option was not desirable because it would trigger further liquidity surfeit and fuel inflationary pressure as available funds may outstrip the economy's absorptive capacity or domestic capacity utilization. It also feels loosening could trigger foreign exchange demand pressure as the excess liquidity will be channeled to either frivolous importations or speculative holding on foreign exchange as alternative investment channels narrow, leading to foreign exchange depreciation and or inflation. MPC also dropped the, a tightening option at this meeting in view of the fragile state of the current gross domestic product growth rate and potential external and domestic headwinds confronting the economy. MPC also feels that tightening could truncate the steady improvement in credit performance, including other financial standards indicators, and reverse the declining trend in MPLs. Moreover, MPC feels tightening could counteract the CBN's credit expansion motive as a necessary condition for improved economic growth and employment generation. The MPC therefore concluded that a whole stance remains desirable at this time, as this would indicate a conservative but cautious and consistent policy choice given the prevailing economic conditions and outlook, thus strengthening the policy credibility and focus. It also feels that a hold signal, a hold will signal MPC's realization of the fragility of the growth recovery and its sensitivity to emerging global and domestic uncertainties hence the need to sustain policy trajectory. After a careful balancing of the benefits and downside risks of each policy option, MPC decided to hold all policy parameters constant, believing that a hold stance will enable the continued permeation of current policy measures in supporting the recorded growth recovery and further boost production and productivity, which would ultimately rein in inflation in the short to medium term. The committee thus decided by a unanimous vote to retain monetary policy NPR at 11.5%. In summary, MPC voted to retain 1. NPR at 11.5%, 2. Retain the asymmetric corridor at plus 100 and minus 700 basis points around the NPR, 3. Retain the CRR at 27.5%, and 4. Retain liquidity ratio at 30%. Oh, yeah, the governor of the central bank, they got into the So they were just a quick one. So this inflation, the Minister of Finance talked about it as part of the uh, decisions to keep the fingers off the petrol subsidy button. What's your take on that, quickly? Well, it's interesting because we need to understand the inflation that happened in the last quarter the central bank governor was talking about. Normally, the inflation we have is cost push, which is food prices, and this, what you're talking about, the impending or the subsidy prices would have had an impact. We're looking at price driven, you know, cost push. But over Christmas, he said that the problem of inflation, which they felt was one of, was as a reminder of demand pull, mm. which was aggregate demand, you know, increasing. So which is quite interesting mm. that it was a demand pull factor yes. of inflation that was from last year. And I think that's very important uh, because this is quite significant because that sort of inflation is actually quite beneficial, consumer spending. It's a very good boost to economic growth and activity if you can manage that. But we're beginning to see signs of that, but they clearly said that was one-off because it was during the festive period. And, and, and aggregate spending yes. and aggregate consumption will return to normal this year. But yes, the question about the fuel subsidy, I think we need to understand very carefully, is that what impact will the increase in fuel prices 
how will that begin to uh, spike inflation once again? Um, and I think that that is, a, that is a big subject, and I think we're not quite sure what happened, but yeah. if you talk about the subsidy, you know, the, what I've always maintained and the advice I've always given government is that at the beginning of this administration, if they had taken the subsidy of maybe 10% every year, 10% every year, and then you do it gradually over a period of time, not only would we not feel it, we would not notice it, but eventually the system would not have that shock of wanting to remove the subsidy. Mm. And the question oh, okay. was even, why don't we just even remove maybe 30% instead of going for 100%? Percent. Mm. Mm. Interesting development. But again, it's been the, the start of the year. Tilewa Debajo, quite a whole lot. So we're speaking, the International Monetary Fund is presenting its global uh, economic outlook for, for the current year. Stand by. Uh, global economic outlook, uh, going to, right now to the IMF, the chief economist, uh, Gita Gopinat, has been uh, doing a briefing and also taking questions from journalists from around the world. Let's take a quick listen, in, everyone. Trade come back very strongly. It's also a reflection of the fact that global demand has shifted more towards goods away from services, and that also helped trigger a lot of, of trade. Uh, so if you, I mean, in the third quarter of uh, last year, uh, you know, towards the end of it, there, was, there were problems in terms of disruptions, delta disruptions, but more supply chain disruptions that were affecting trade. Um, but most recently, we're seeing some of that get ironed out, and we're seeing recoveries uh, on trade. But I think looking forward, we should keep in mind that as things normalize and as demand starts pivoting back to services away from, from goods, we should also see some reduction in this. We should expect to see some slowing in the growth uh, in trade. Um, so I would say these are the co combinations of factors. Uh, that's a, a, a briefing currently going on that's live from the International Monetary Fund in Washington. Gita Gopinath, who is the chief economist of the International Monetary Fund, is leaving that position, of course, moving forward to another, moving to another position within the IMF. But, of course, this very important uh, review comes in very right now. Update, global economic growth is expected to slow down from 5.9% last year to about 4.4% in 2022, which is half a percentage point lower from for 2022 and in October, World Economic Outlook, uh, which the IMF re, uh, released, the drop likely reflects forecast markdowns in the two largest economies in the United States, the pandemic in China. Then, of course, the IMF still projects Nigeria's 2022 uh, to grow 2.7%, which is unchanged from the IMF's position last uh, October. Tilewa Debajo of CFG uh, is here, the CEO, advi CFG advisory. Tilewa, this is quite interesting that Nigeria, we just, you're just touching on uh, 2.8, which the Central Bank talked about, the World Bank, now the IMF retaining the 2.7% with the first subsidy issue and the whole interest rate on hold to start a new year. Uh, you think we're on trajectory for what the Central Bank is confident about, that the uh, growth is beginning to happen, despite it being soft? Well, it's interesting to add to that, the Federal Ministry of Finance and the Federal Government is actually projecting 4.4% growth too. So You think that's more ambitious? No, well, it is ambitious, but it's interesting and I think it's positive that there is a focus on growth. And that is why I'm very happy about this pronouncement for monetary policy. There's a sensitivity and there's a realization that growth is very important in this time of the economy to drive. They need to sustain that growth uh, because growth and sustaining growth is the only way out of the current predicament we have with about 100 million people in poverty, the levels of unemployment. Six, seven percent growth per annum will solve a lot of problems in Nigeria today. And so it's important that we sustain the fragile growth that we have. Uh, the central bank, I think monetary policy has reached its limit. I think the central bank has done what it needs to do. Um, it's doing more with intervention funds and a lot of other things they're doing on the side. But the big elephant in the room really is the fiscal side. There's a serious need for fiscal restructuring. You mentioned the subsidies, revenue challenges. Despite the fact that oil is now closing on $90 a barrel, um, we are not able to meet our quotas because our production is falling short of our quotas. So that means that there is a potential loss of revenue for us in that. And those are the issues that we really need to address frontally. In, in terms of uh, what, what would do the factors will be before the MPC in the month of March, what will likely change between now and the end and, 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 and the third month of the year? 
Well, what I expect to see right now is that with, this, with the mandatory policy holding these rates the way they have, um, I think we should begin to see more significant activity in the areas of growth. What I, what I would like to also say is the fact that if you understand that last year we had about three unicorns in Nigeria and we had about close to $1.5 billion of funds coming in for startups. Uh, $4 billion came in to the whole of Africa, $1.5 billion came into Nigeria. That's significant. We're expecting that amount of money to go into $2 billion this year. We have close to between $25 to $30 billion of remittances from a diaspora. Um, it's important for us to continue to improve these flows to be able to stimulate growth in our economy. Uh, because despite or in spite of the government policies, investments and things are going on around this country. So we need to sustain that momentum to be able to achieve the growth. The PMIs are looking quite positive. Uh, we're all recovering globally from the COVID pandemic and the global economy is more or less returning to normal. And I think if we can sustain these policies over the next three months, we should begin to reap the benefits. Well, quite a lot happening out there. Tilewa Depajo, uh, CEO at uh, CFG Advisory.